This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about Isaiah Rogers liking weird tweets. Don't know what's going on with the team, social media. It just seems like it's going to be the death of us. Also, Nick Sirianni, he's not going anywhere. He's not going to get fired. And lastly, Jalen Hurts, disrespect, got to stop. But let's get straight into it. All right, so before I get into the foolery and talk about all this other stuff, Shout out to Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham we will be playing his 200th game in the NFL. 200 games. Think about it. When he started, it was 16 games, now 17 games. But 200 games. Incredible. Incredible. And not just, oh, it's just this um, farewell tour. He's playing at a high level. Hell, we need him right now. He even said, like, yo, if the Eagles need me for another season, I'll do it. And the way we are going, we might need him for another season. So shout out to Brandon Graham. Right, so let's get into it, man. Let's talk about my guy, Isaiah Rogers. Y'all know I got love for Isaiah Rogers. Y'all know it's probably hard for me to make this video talking about him. Because I, I give him credit. He was one of the, like, first probably like the third or fourth like Eagles guy that, you know, actually retweeted my stuff and, you know, showed me love. And he showed a lot of content creators love. But we got to talk about this. So there's a, a thing going on in the Colts world. The Colts got some bad cornerbacks. So, I mean, terrible cornerbacks. Whereas, though, if he was playing for the Colts today, he'd easily be cornerback one. So the coach put up something and let me go ahead and read it. So this coach Twitter page put random late night thought. This this move won't happen, but getting Isaiah Rogers back will help the cornerback room immensely. Wishful thinking though. Then put a like, you know, emoji, then put for the shoe, because coach wore shoe made sense. And then this guy responded to it like, we all know how bad the Eagles secondary has played this year, which is not true. The secondary hasn't been bad, but been a defensive line. And then the fact Isaiah Rodgers has only seen the field for nine total snaps in 2024 should tell y'all something. It should tell us that the Eagles coaching staff is crazy. Always trying to live in the past, but even the past could have made this team better. So Isaiah Rogers responded to this and put a laughing emojis. And then, you know, a lot of Colts fans start, you know, commenting under it. Like, you coming back, bro? You coming back, bro? We need you to come back. And those same Colts fans start exposing them. They're like, yo, he's liking my tweet about coming back home. And they screenshotting it. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man, they caught you slipping, Isaiah Rogers. He eventually, again, deleted the tweet. But, yes, they caught him slipping. And the same thing I said about Devin White, I have to say about Isaiah Rogers. This is some weird shit, man. I mean, this is weird. Now, do I go after the coaching staff or do I go after these players or do I go after Howie Roseman for signing a lot of outside players? Now, I get it. Isaiah Rogers is more than likely frustrated. Third best corner on this team. If you had to rank a top three, he should be on the field. He should, but I always say this too about Isaiah Rodgers. He shot himself in the own foot. He should have been open to playing the slot. I'm sorry. Queen Yon Mitchell, you drafted him to be an outside corner. You was hurt week one. He showed that he can handle the outside corner position. He's been playing at a high level. Darius Slay. Yes, he, he's a social media king, and he gets on our nerves, but he's holding it down on his side. Not even think when you played your nine snaps coming in, you were decent, but it, you can't sub out the first round pick. You can't sub out your, you know, your high paid cornerback. I mean, the best spot for him to take or was to take was that slot position. He never took advantage of it. He just didn't take advantage of it. He told the coach, I think I heard him say this on, I think it was the Philly special podcast. Like they asked him, do you want to play outside or do you want to play inside? He said, I want to be an outside corner. Whereas though, he, in my opinion, his answer should have been, I'm open for anything as long as I'm on the field. Now, did Vic Fangio and these guys probably mislead him? Possibly. 
He possibly misled him, like how they misled Devin White. And as of today, Devin White is not on the team and released. But this, this still don't make it right, because right now he is a Philadelphia Eagle. He is. And liking tweets and stuff about the coach, that ain't cool. That ain't cool at all. Like, come on, where's the team camaraderie? Where is that? Where's this taking advantage of the opportunities you're getting? That block field goal, that was dope. But fans called you out on the answer you gave about running a defender into Cooper DeGene. That's just how fans are, especially in Philadelphia. It's just how we are. So I, I think it's some weird shit to like tweets about your old team. Devin White, when he was retweeting that Jalen Hurts was getting sacked. That was some weird shit. Both is weird shit. So I don't know what's going on. And I get it. I, I can't really blame Howie because Howie does everything he can do to make the team better. He signed a lot of players. Some of them hit, some of them don't. A lot of people talking about the CJGJ not working right now or the Bryce Hub, this and that. But nobody's mentioning Zach Bond and nobody is mentioning um, Saquon Barkley because those dudes are working out. They are playing at a high level. Nobody even talk about the extensions he gave his wide receivers to keep the team together. Nobody. I'm just saying, man. So I, I can't blame Howie. A lot of people want to put blame on Howie, this and that, and make it fun of like, oh, it's Howie season, this and that. But I, I could say Howie is doing everything he can to make this team better. And that actually started with Isaiah Rogers. You signed the guy that got suspended, knowing when he come back, he could play at a high level. But unfortunately, I'm not sure what's going on. Howie don't call the plays. You know, Vic Fangio taking over the defense, but Vic Fangio did mislead the the Devin White and the Isaiah Rogers thing. Again, maybe Isaiah Rogers is just simply frustrated, but two wrongs don't make it right. If you mislay Isaiah Rogers, that's wrong. Isaiah Rogers putting on the social media facade is wrong. Just is what it is. Got to call it what it is. This is weird. Now, if Isaiah Rogers want to get traded, he should demand a trade. See what Howie Roseman could get for him. Just keep it like, keep it as that. Colts really do need a cornerback. If we could find some way to get a pick from them or even a player, see if it can happen. This is what it is. You don't want to be a part of the team. Fuck it. All right, man. So let's talk about Nick Sirianni. You know, a lot of people were saying like Nick Sirianni's going to get fired. Not mid-season. Hell no, not mid-season. Hell no. That means you just gave up on the season. That mean that the season is over, we trash, and we prepare for next season. No, that's not happening. Nick Sirianni will play out this whole season. You know why? Because this is still an 11-win team. Y'all tell me, how can I say that? Well, I can make a case that our team been decimated in the best situations that we are to and to. The worst case scenarios could have been as us being 0-4 and 4-0. And, and, and I could tell you why. Us being 0-4 mean we just flat out suck. 4-0 with bad playing, not knowing what to adjust, that could be the worst thing for us. Because we seen when we went 10-1 and and when we was winning all those games straight a year ago, the tech engine light was on. The engine just blew after the 49ers game because we had holes, we had problems that we didn't adjust because one of the things the team kept saying, well, we win in these games, we win in these games. Now you're not winning these games. Now you know you got to adjust. There's stuff you got to change. Got to ramp up because people are going to lose their jobs. And I think the Eagles are going to change it up. I really do. I think Nick Sirianni is going to get more play calling to Kellen Moore. I think we're going to see more Saquon Barkley. I don't think Nick Sirianni gets fired. Don't follow the Jets. The Jets is a piece of shit organization. How the hell do you fire the head coach whose responsibility is for the defensive side of the ball and the Jets been playing at a high level on the defensive side of the ball? How the hell do you do that? And you know why um, Robert Salah was fired? I was watching a lot of Jets stuff. Robert, um, the head coach, he wanted to fire the offensive coordinator, which would, would, would have been the right move, but... Aaron Rodgers liked Nathaniel Hacking so much that they didn't want that to happen. So they fired the head coach. 
the offense been playing like shit and the defensive coach or defensive head coach wanted to fire the offensive coordinator, that would have been the right thing to do. It, don't follow that piece of shit organization. Hell no. Don't follow them. It's a piece of shit. Please don't. That organization is dumb, stupid. The freaking defense been keeping them keeping them alive and they fired their head coach. That'd be a stupid move to fire Nate Sirianni now. Hell, he got the perfect excuse right now. The team haven't been healthy since week one. And that's just the God honest truth. It just is what it is. How the hell can you get mad at the head coach, Nick Sirianni, in the Bucs game? Trust me, there was some stuff I was mad about the Bucs game. When the defense is just simply missing tackles. Now, you could say technique. Yeah, you could get mad at Vic Fangio for that, tackling donuts. But you can't get mad at the coaching staff if the players are missing tackles. I can't get mad at Nick Sirianni. If Jalen Hurts is fumbling and throwing picks. Now, I could get mad at certain plays. I could get mad at why you're not running Saquon Barkley more. But the execution and the miscues are by the players. And that's a fact. That's a fact. But at the end of the day, we're 2-2. Two and two. Hopefully, they can fix it. Nick Sirianni is not going anywhere. Not this year. I refuse for this year to be a bust year. Hell no. We too talented. We're way too talented. Some shit just got to change. And that's not the head coach. Name one team that made it far in the playoffs with a fire head coach. I don't I don't know the team. Y'all probably let me know in the comments, but I, I simply don't know the team that fired the head coach and they went far that same season. Maybe they got that juice of, oh, we won a couple games with this guy and that's it. I never seen it succeed. Just is what it is, man. And let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Now the Jalen Hurts disrespect is getting way too out of hand. But let me play this clip by, I think this was Speak Up or something like that. One of these networks and Jeff Saturday spoke. And I'm going to defend my guys. You guys are good enough to come on here all the time. I'm going to defend you. Here's my question. If you're not buying Washington, who are you buying in that division? Is it Dallas? Uh, Eagles probably for me. Eagles? Eagles for me are, are – I would buy them. I think their roster is better overall. Can they put it together with Sirianni and Hurts and all the stuff that we and, – and I know they were off. That's going to be the issue Jeff? for me. But but that's, that's – that's Who has a better quarterback? Between the Eagles or the or the Commanders? Oh, uh, the Commanders. <laughs> commanders. Yeah, I mean, look, the kid, I mean, I mean but, but, but I, he, he ended the question there. You could he didn't want to say – No, no, no. I'm going to say this. You could almost say that about 28 teams – like, oh, it's, that, he that's is, why I'm he saying is they're, really, they're going he to is win the division. Really good. Yeah, so the other questions that I think Jeff could have asked you is like, who has a better offensive line? Who has more talent? Who has more experience? Who has more success? But I would say I would still sit, stick with Washington in part because as much as I love all the talent that the Eagles have, it's been a long stretch where they, they have not been good. Well. And this is like similar to the Kansas City conversation that we had earlier. It's like I don't want to get captured by what we know in the past. When we look at this team now, this Eagles team has not been good. Right. And Washington team has been getting better through the course of this season, and yeah. I think they will continue to do so. So I, I guess really what I'm trying to say here is we had Zach Ertz on the countdown cam. You know, we talked to these guys walking into the stadium. You listen to the way he's talking about Jaden Daniels. Oh. You listen to the way that team talks about each other. Yeah. There's something good going on there. Yeah. Listen to the way the Eagles talk after wins. Yeah. After they <laughs> win games. That's a good point. Uh, you, a good you tell point. me which of those two teams is going to continue to play, uh, is going to go like this, and which he, one. He's done a good job. He's done gonna, a great job in I, Washington. I, I, I am 100% buying what they are. All right, this Jaden Daniel thing is getting out of hand, man. I'm sorry. I seen the Washington Commanders beat the Giants with all field goals. All field goals. That last game, yes, it was a blowout, but they defense shut down Deshaun Watson and Jaden Daniels. He had one good throw, but he was he wasn't that good. He wasn't that good at all against the Browns. He wasn't good when he played one real team. And that's the Buccaneers. And the Washington shit the bed against the Buccaneers. That's just the truth. The God honest truth. 
So this Jaden Daniels is just so much better than Jalen Hurts and this and that. The disrespect got to stop. Now this is getting out of hand. We're talking about a guy that was an all-pro, runner-up MVP, well, now multiple Pro Bowls. We, we got to cut it. This season is so out of hand. I've seen shit where Giants fans think Daniel Jones is better than Patrick Mahomes now. This season is getting way out of hand. The successful teams know September, beginning of October, don't mean nothing. Washington, Giants, and these dudes are living on the high because they was projected to win like four games. Now Giants won two games. Commanders won four games. And they living on the high right now. But we all know. We all know. It all starts in November, December, January football. Let's see how long this can last. We're going to see how long it can last. But the the Jalen Hurts, man, I get it. He's been fumbling. He hasn't been looking good. But this shit got to stop. This is getting way out of hand. Way out of hand, man. Again, I can give Jaden Daniels some praise. He's been looking good. Just, just give it time. Let's see how the season plays out. Let's see how it plays out first. Y'all was just telling me a couple weeks ago the Saints were this dominant team. And CJ GJ said the Saints ain't shit. They just lost three straight games. I'm just saying, just let it play out. Let it play out, and we, we will see. We will see how good Jaden Daniels is. We, we will see what what's the other team, the Giants are. We will see. But that's all I got for you guys today. And Hey, man, what do you think? How do you feel about everything, man? Uh, went on a small rant. You know, this is more of a rant video. You know, I'm just, uh, I don't know, man. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And this is Eagle Al, man. I'm out.